It's Thursday, the 4th of August, 2016. This is Glenn Zuckman in Newport Beach, California, here at the home studio of Masa Saruti, a Iranian born and educated, uh, now living in Southern California for the past three and a half years, artist. Yes. Masa Saruti, welcome to Agent of Chaos. Thank you. Thank you for coming over. So um, you were born in Tehran in the mid 80s? Yes, 1981, okay. to be exact. The early. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about, about Iran before you were born? Um, I mean, like, whatever I tell, it's, um, it's not first-hand experience, right? Okay. So, you might have or just like, uh, what, what, like the, what the culture kind of the, that you were born into. Um, I was born in a um, moderate Muslim family. Like, um, not practicing so much and okay. not like really disconnected like I was born Muslim and um, my my parents had really um, interest in different um, in arts in different forms I mean and then my father was a painter he's a painter he, he has a um, painting um, academy kind of thing in Tehran so um, I, I, I always had this connection and yeah, this like we, I remember we watched a lot of like Hollywood movies. Oh really? Yeah, when I was a kid and um, yeah, I pretty much knew a lot about like different cu cultures. We used to travel to, like we traveled to a lot of um, Asian countries, like we are closer. So uh, yeah, I had a very good, almost good understanding of different cultures and um, I really uh, wanted to always learn more. So tell me about the Tehran that you grew up in and, and went to school in. Uh, yeah, Tehran is a metropolitan, so it's, um, it's huge and it's um, like in every corner of it you can experience different um, different things really the culture even from the in the south and north of Tehran is different so um, you can you can really have a very um, different experience like just walking through the streets of different so uh, certainly Los Angeles is a little bit that way that there's ah, there's many yeah yeah I could <laughs> yeah I could say that and um, Tehran is uh, actually home to most of the best universities in Iran. So a lot of people want to apply for those universities and it's like, uh, it's kind of Iran's art capital. The, okay. The, yeah. So the Contemporary Museum of Art is in there and um, it's, um, it's really alive. It has a lot of galleries these days, especially that I haven't been to a lot of them. They're oh, really, since you left, galleries yeah. have opened. Oh no, there, 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 there have always been galleries, but now it's a kind of a, a huge trend that everyone is opening a garage gallery or like a private gallery. So I haven't been to a lot of them, um, and um, I don't know. What else do you want to know? So, so five years ago, you uh, you got married. And then a week later, you left. Yeah. Can you can you tell me about what was going on with all yeah, of that? Yeah, um, like um, my husband and I um, shared the interest to um, uh, to move out of Iran to have like to experience new things and to um, obtain b like better education or maybe more opportunities. Um, so we didn't really settle after getting married. We didn't have, like we didn't rent an apartment, anything. For your week. Yeah. So um, so we decided to leave after after a week. Like when I mean uh, I mean. I mean, like, was it? Did you get married because you knew you were gonna leave? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. So we had our our suitcases packed when we uh, actually <laughs> had our wedding ceremony. So and then we moved to uh, Malaysia. Um, we lived there almost one year, and um, 
we learned English there. <laughs> yeah. So one of my students uh, this summer um, is from Iran, mm -hmm. and she has pretty negative feelings about her life there. Is that? Do you have what kind of relationship do you? Um, you know, um, there is a lot of conflict, conflicting ideas and feelings that people might have in specific situation and then I, I could say um, like if, if we because I was born after the, the Islamic revolution this is uh, I mean like um, I could I could talk about that more and um, some people see the revolution as a negative like event and some see it as a positive one but I have a kind of a, a neutral feeling to that because a lot of good things happened after that and then maybe there are there there's a lot some kind of um, um, situations that happen situation that happened be after the revolution like the political um, difficulties and everything and people's life have changed a lot Mm. Like, I can say, like, I can tell from my own family because um, my mom had really, uh, like, hard experience after the, the revolution because she was, she was working and then everything has, was changed in her working place and then she had to wear something, like, like, everything was changed. And um, it depends on the, I mean, like, it really depends on the family that you were born to because, um, for for my family, like revolution didn't really close all of the like the, the doors to to the world. For some, maybe that happened, and then um, we always had like this um, like um, illegal satellite dishes <laughs> and like videotapes and everything. It was hard like to to catch up with what's happening around the world. Like there was no internet or anything, but um, still. I can see why some Five years ago there wasn't too much internet access. Yeah, yeah, okay. still. But I, I can see why some people have like negative feelings. I, I really can understand and I feel like... But that wasn't your experience though. So when you mm -hmm. left it wasn't like escape from... No, no, it was not like that because I knew that if I, like if mm, my husband and I, like both, if mm, we were living still in Iran, we would have like quite a fair living there. Maybe, um, um, maybe we, it, there was not a lot of opportunities to experience and to um, to share, but um, still, it was fair. You know. So you weren't escaping something that was uncomfortable. You were just going out to explore yes, more possibilities. Exactly. It was our case. But I, 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 I know a lot of my close friends that they like really escaped and. Uh, and then some of them that can never go back and visit mm. because of some issues like political maybe issues but um, my case was not like that. So yeah. you've done, so you went to Malaysia for a year and then you went uh, to the sort of the eastern United States for half a year and now yes. three and a half years here in, yes. in Newport Beach um, and you've got two projects, uh, 7,500 Miles and Nature's Cadence, which you just had a, a reception for on Saturday. Yes. Um, that both have something to do with you being an, an Iranian expatriate here in Southern California yeah. and, and, and that journey. So um, we're out here on the veranda with all of these succulents. <laughs> and um, I want to talk about the the conceptual ideas in in your projects, but I thought maybe we could we could have a little succulent tour first, and, oh, and yeah, then sure. and then talk about where this project comes from. Yeah, sure. These are the leaves that I um, put in a tray when I actually um, trimming my succulents. New succulents grow from every individual. It's amazing. Yeah, and this one. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> so these other ones are, are on the same many. same path they've got, but they've just got like these little tiny roots going down. Yes, a and then some of them are really overachiever, like, like that this one. one. Yes. And then this one, it doesn't have any roots yet. But for example, this one. Oh, it's one, blooming without roots. Yeah. Huh. This one, yeah, you can see the roots with this one. And yeah. 
This so, one is just sprawling a little bit. Um, and just roots. <laughs> so it's amazing the way this works, but also I, you told me that the leaf that the roots and the buds are, are coming out of, that that leaf won't actually be part of the new plant. It's like the the host that's bringing the yes. genetic material and it'll be consumed for food. Exactly. But, but the new plant will be separate yeah. from that. The, the, the leaf is going to be dried out like like thoroughly and then you you put it in the um, in the soil as like just as a part to to uh, in the soil so you can it can keep the plant. So it seemed that's maybe it. a little bit of a metaphor for for being an emigre in a way. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't think <laughs> thought about that way, but yeah. And then let's look at this be. other plant, this other succulent. This succulent was one of the ones that almost died, like you can see it here. Uh -huh. And then I was totally disappointed and not watering it. And then it started having um, new leaves and new um, stems. So, um, and I didn't, I, and this one was so weak and I couldn't really um, grow too much leaves. And it was just growing to, to survive out of the, the soil because this part was under the soil. So, and then you can see it, it gets stronger from here. And then I didn't touch the shape because I like how this succulent is like um, th thriving actually. It's trying to survive in this, um, difficult <laughs> drought situation that I was providing. So, um, yeah, this was a kind of, um, this was a cutting that I put in the soil and I was totally uh, disappointed. Um, I didn't see a growth for a long time. And, um, and suddenly, yeah, this is what happened. And uh, yeah, Great. I, yeah, it really um, is the idea of um, like as beautiful as plants are to look at, um, we never know what's happening underground when they grow roots. And uh, this is something that really um, I can relate to as an immigrant because um, I might have been really still mm -hmm. for, for really like, the ha like a couple of years ago. And, um, but I can see that I was um, like growing roots and um, feeling at home. So tell me about uh, Nature's Cadence, how this project came about or how the plant, or tell me about what was happening with you being a, an emigre here in Southern California. Was it going well? How, what was happening with plants, life? Um, I mean, like when I, first um, moved to California it was I, I thought I'm really ready for everything and I just like went out and then uh, I was trying to like involve get involved in different activities and do some volunteer um, things um, I, but uh, after a while I thought I, I'm really I don't have the energy to go out I feel like I'm really homesick and I don't I, I felt so nostalgic I thought I thought I, I cannot really relate to anyone here like I went to museum and I couldn't relate to the art I was like uh, I was like no I just miss home so much that I cannot uh, really uh, think of any other thing so I spent a lot of um, time alone um, maybe reading or just sleeping doing nothing and um, and then on the like I, I had some plants in the patio always and I uh, I might um, had some cuttings because I love plants so I, I had I grabbed some cuttings whenever I go to a friend's house or something and um, so and then when I, uh, when I was like spending time by myself, like just doing nothing really, uh, I, uh, I noticed that the plants are really um, dry and they're dying and they're not doing good. So you and the plants were, were both sort of withering. Yes, kind of. Like you know that succulents are really uh, resilient plants, like they're doing really great uh, with um, not watering them but uh, it was a long time that I didn't really uh, water them so um, like maybe even I, I 
I might have been bothering them, but I didn't really trim or I didn't really pay attention to them. Maybe I didn't give them um, give them the the love and the energy that they plants really needed. So uh, I decided to like take care of them. I trim them. I um, kind of spent the more time spent more time on in the patio with plants, and then I realized that they're like kind of everything is blooming like everything is like really um um it's rewarding I was there say. a period where the where the plants were doing better than you oh yeah okay yeah oh my god yeah definitely <laughs> so everyone would say like wow this is like this one is growing like and so fast and this is so beautiful and i was like oh yeah <laughs> and then um so um they they were really uh they they really inspired me to um be strong and then wait and then um i to be patient because i i thought when i moved to because we lived in iowa for six seven months and then I was thinking like as soon as I moved to California I can do this I can do that and then I did it but like the couple of first couple of months was great and then I was low energy and I mm -hmm. my battery was died and then um, um, so did you feel like like you were never gonna be at home here yeah do this you still is, feel that way no I, I'm actually feeling like um, like these plants are so tiny and then even when you see a little like small sprout it's like they're really fighting for life they're really um they they gave me a lot of motivation okay so i feel like yeah i can i can grow my roots i i i definitely can um maybe it's not like i have a lot of memories like i i when i left um iran i was 30 so I have a lot of memory and I I can never forget my roots uh, my my original home but uh, this is the, the this is the consequences of uh, my own decision so I should be able to overcome and cope with the, the um, situation the hardness and the homesickness and everything and unless I cannot be successful because I dreamed for more when I left my country. Have, have you been back in these five years? Um, yeah, two and a half year, two, two and a half years ago. Yeah, I visited back, so. Do you feel like you're in Southern California to stay or, or we'll see what happens? Uh, I think we're gonna stay like, yeah, we don't have specific plan uh, to, to move out of Southern California for now. <laughs> so your your other project that kind of ties well literally ties in its title from here to home uh, seven thousand five hundred miles. Yes. Tell, tell me about this project. Um, that project started with um, like I have a lot of friends uh, like I went to art school with and then they're doing great. They're like creating very beautiful art and um, and I was always uh, talking like talking to them I thought like um, it's um, they didn't get the um, the exposure that they really um, deserve so far so and even like the my, my initial um, my initial um, <laughs> I think you had to cut it initial um, Impulse, initial yeah. idea. Okay, impulse. Yeah, <laughs> my initial impulse um, came from my sister because um, she's a painter and and she she does very like um, incredible art and um, she had a little bit of hardship to um, to get the venue to. Um, because of the content, actually, she couldn't really promote her, herself and to exhibit, like, she couldn't exhibit her work. So I was thinking maybe I can do something for her. And then I talked to other friends and, and I, 
I realized that they, they all have, like some of them might have had um, exhibitions in, even in the Europe or in Iran, but they really want to um, get more audience and uh, like have really get, get more feedback on their art. So I thought maybe I can do something to um, really help them with that. And the other, on the other hand, I, um, in like Southern California, especially LA is really um, kind of a, like an art um, capital of the, the, the Southern California. So, um, but still a lot of representations of Iranian art is um, stereotyped. Okay. And especially with women, it's um, everyone wants to see the exotic part of um, women in in Middle East, hmm. and um, they like while it's um, in Middle East, like women are fighting to um, fighting to uh, for their rights in patriarchal um, society, but still Western um, approach is the and they they want to see more of it. So it's a kind of frustrating situation for women in, in Middle Eastern countries, and especially in Iran, because Iran is, um, I would say, a little bit more avant-garde in, in art. And this is not the coincidence that a lot of like, good, um, like a lot of artists actually from the Middle East are from Iran. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, like, um, this was another um, reason that I really thought I should really do this to educate the, the, the Western audience here in Southern California or maybe um, uh, even in, in other places about the, the reality that is happening about, like, in, in, about um, women's life in Iran. Because um, um, this is a kind of like, um, they, they think about Iranian woman as um, submissive and passive victim. Okay. But like you, when you see, like when you look at the the, the universities and colleges, like sixty percent of the, the 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 students are women, and then they go to the work the workforce and everything. Like it's they're doing okay. They're doing like and they're doing good. They're um, finding their ways around the, the, the limitations and then the, the hardships. And, um, but it's a pity then you see uh, here in the U.S. that um, you, you, you hear that uh, the, the biggest problem in Iran is hijab mm. or, or gender segregations. It's, it's not really like, uh, we're living in a global um, okay. <laughs> so it's like um, we have global um, issues, like global concerns. It's not just the, it's not the the, the local and um, how to say, um, women in Iran have the same concerns as women, like the same concerns as women in in the U.S. But um, no one wants to see this. Okay. So so what is seven thousand five hundred miles? Um, 7,500 miles is the distance from here, <laughs> uh, my home in, in Southern California, to my home like in Tehran. From Los Angeles to Tehran? Yes. And, and, and why is the exhibition called 7,500 miles and, uh, and not 12,000 kilometers? <laughs> <laughs> because I would say like uh, it's, um, I want to um, aim Western uh, like uh, audience and they relate better in the in the mile okay, and then probably <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah and well Western United States anyway yes yes United States and um and we have to bring all these um, art folks from Tehran to um, to Southern California so this is the reason that we thought it's good to um, have the so it started with your sister yeah and now you're curating the, many. Iranian women artists. Yes, yes. And, and it's, it's a website right now and we'll... Yes, it's a, like, um, 
I have um, I started this project with two of my friends, Natalie and Alisa, and uh, they contributed a lot in the project and they helped me a lot. They really um, uh, inspired me in many ways. And um, now currently I'm working with another like um, friend, Parisa. She, she lives in Michigan and she's just, uh, we went to undergrad together. And uh, I was lucky to find, find her here. And um, we have the same um, perspective and everything like is, is good with us, like working together in, in the, um, on this project. Um, and then um, there's, a, there's a website that uh, we created for the project, which is um, introducing the artists and the, the project in itself. Um, and um, we have a support page that if we can like get enough support, we can bring the, the art and have the, the actual exhibition actually. And uh, we are, we are um, currently submitting proposals for different organizations and galleries. Uh, I would say like we did it for um, some galleries in New York, in um, Detroit, and uh, here in California to see if we can realize the, the exhibition. Can you tell me about a, a couple of artists that you've curated into the exhibition and, and what's happening in their work? Yeah, I like initially I started with my friends, like the, 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 the artists that I went to school with. And then they um, introduced me to different, like the, to their friends or different artists that it was really great to meet a lot of artists through this um, um, project. And, um, but still we thought we, we need to access to a like, bigger pool of artists. So we're gonna have an open call for submissions really soon for the project. Oh, okay, and so then, you've got a lot of work on the website yes, now, yes. But, but you're really actually still expanding quite a bit. Yes, and then, uh, but a couple of uh, artists that we got already um, on the website, like um, they're all coming from different backgrounds. Um, like for example, Homo Arcani, she's a really up and coming um, artist and she had um, several exhibitions in the Europe and like even a solo exhibition in London. But she's still, she's a pop artist and she's still really, um, she's waiting to get more like feedback and, and she wants to make a conversation with American audience. And what kinds of issues is, does her work explore? In her work, she's um, critic, um, critics the, the, the society, actually, but not the society because of the political issues or like the um, like, um, outside. Um, it, she's actually challenging the culture, the young, young culture that it's now kind of the, the trends and some things that happening, like the um, show off things and mm. <laughs> There is one artist, Nargis Esfahani, she lives in um, Montreal, Canada, and she's a photographer. I think she moved out of Iran a couple of years ago. She had several exhibitions in Canada, but she's still like, like Homa, she wants to have uh, her work exhibited here. And um, there are also artists that are really emerging and emerging, and, and never had exhibitions like outside of Iran. And they maybe just they've been to group exhibitions in Iran, but they are really promising artists that they um, um, actually under uh, represented now. So I'm actually trying to like help them bring this um, exhibition to life. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. so, so for someone who's, who's in the, say, in the United States, an artist maybe, um, who's never been to Iran, mm -hmm. what should they know about the work that's being done there? Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, now that the art, um, art scene in Iran is really dynamic, and it's really brave and bold. 
and it's it has nothing to do with the with the stereotypes that uh, is represented by the media and um, the the kind of um, cliches that uh, really some some um, um, galleries or organizations are trying to uh, feed people with it's um, this uh, I mean like it's a lot of art it's a lot of good art and um, in many forms like um, installations video art and um, painting and everything they just a way to be appreciated by the audience but um, and when you say it's bold, is that is is that politically risky or or not really? Or? Um, there might be some of them, yeah. Some of them might be, but um, for this particular exhibition, like seven uh, seventy five hundred miles, we don't really um, focus on the political or any like even if you um, notice like politically. Um, charged uh, exhibitions are still like considered that cliches okay you know so we don't really um, so that's uh, not really what people are thinking about so much yeah yeah and so because that might like, be what we're thinking about here in the West but it's not really what yes, they're thinking about exactly back home. because they're, they're really more concerned about like their personal intimate mo moments and like like every other um, contemporary individual you know this is something like when you when you have access to the internet and um, social media, um, you can if you can actually like use the Google Translate to <laughs> translate some of the, the social media posts that uh, are coming out from Iran. You can see that uh, people are like really worried about animal rights or global warming or like a lot of issues that it's like more universal. So it is more global culture than, yeah. than maybe we here in the West tend to think, <laughs> which is kind of yes, your point. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, I really, um, I'm really actually excited for this um, exhibition um, because um, if I can realize this exhibition, if we can um, bring this, bring the artwork uh, all the way from Iran to to the U.S. I really want to see the reactions. I really want to see uh, how people, how how the the community here here can relate to that art artwork without um, any um, like. Um, a stereotypical filters or you know it's a it's a unique approach to the to the art I mean like some people might think it's a mainstream exhibition but I mean like um, and, and I, I've talked to a lot of people during the during this um, time that they thought like maybe I should focus more on um, the the part that censorship or the um, the political issues. But again, that's actually more of a Western perspective. Exactly. So I thought, like, when I talk to to the artists, they really want to be recognized and 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 then um, appreciated as um, as just artists. They didn't. They don't want to. Um, um, they don't want to be um, poli be uh, involved in a politically charged exhibition. Like, um, they don't want to be. Um, um, they don't want to be part of these cliches. They they want to be themselves. Like, like you can you can curate the show whenever you, like like whatever you want. But um, if if I can do it with a political message, it would be really like huge in, in the U.S. But I don't want to do that. So. As, since I love cyberspace so much, I feel like the website is already a, a big success. But but you're very much focused on having a physical exhibition. Yes. Is, is there any kind of time frame for that? Um, actually, not because uh, we um, we are thinking to um, if we can get some financial financial support, and then we we have like we have no 
idea how we can get get that from. So we didn't um, really um, set any um, time or or um, deadline for that yet. Masa Saruti, <laughs> thanks for visiting Agent of Chaos. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. That was great. <laughs> oh, I don't know.